It's not surprising that the students who are able to study more end up learning more and ultimately performing better in school. But we also know that studying can definitely leave you burned out. So in this video, we're going to discuss a few of the strategies that I've used to allow me to study for sometimes over 10 hours per day throughout much of my time in medical school without burning out. If you're new here, my name is J.R. Smith and I'm a fourth year medical student at the Mayo Clinic. So where did we get this 10 hour per day study mark? Well, my days usually started at about five in the morning where I would study on my own from about five to seven in the morning. And then from about eight to four, I would make my way up to campus for either lectures or classwork or clinical and hospital responsibilities. And finally, I would spend an hour in the evening preparing for the next day from about five to six. And so just there is already 11 hours, but we'll take one away for lunch and because 10 sounds a little better than 11. But of course, this is very broad averages. Some days were much more and some days were a lot less. But we're going to break down the four strategies that I used when I did have to study this much and make sure that you stick around until the end because these strategies are going to get more and more high yield as we go. The first strategy is to find a study buddy. This can do wonders for your motivation and accountability. Peer pressure is real, but it can be harnessed for good and sometimes just working with a classmate who is very committed in their work can make you become more motivated and focused in your own work. You're also able to create a sense of teamwork where you're pushing each other to achieve the goals that you have for yourself. And sometimes there can even be a bit of friendly competition because a friendly rivalry can do wonders in boosting your engagement and keeping you more focused and make studying that much more fun. Another reason why a study buddy can be helpful is they can actually help you learn and comprehend the things that you're studying. By explaining concepts to each other, you're deepening your understanding of the material through active recall and rephrasing. And when you're working with people who have different perspectives and different strengths and weaknesses, you'll have a much more comprehensive understanding of what you're learning. When you're studying with a friend, you can identify knowledge gaps. Asking and answering questions help expose the areas of your studying that need just a little bit more work. And lastly, a good study buddy is huge for your mental well-being and reducing your stress. Whether you're dividing tasks to accomplish more in less time or just having someone there who you can vent to, a person like this when you're studying in already a stressful environment can be invaluable. And if you're like me and would benefit from someone just being on the other side of a screen and studying with them, you may be interested in my Teach As You Learn community where we'll be planning a few study with me sessions where people can log on and just have the presence of other students working hard, peer pressuring them to stay focused and get their work done. Of course, all information can be found in the description below, but this is where you will find me studying. The next strategy I recommend to help study for significant periods of time without burning out is to change your study style. This can mean either changing the physical location of where you're studying or the tools that you're using to study. Whether you're reading or watching videos or listening to a podcast, it doesn't really matter. The key here is just switching it up. Different activities will activate different regions of your brain, preventing one region from being overstimulated and thus burns out. Think of it like exercise. Switching modalities is key so that one muscle group doesn't get burnt out. And as bad as I know you wanna to go to the gym and just strictly do bicep curls, those legs, they're important too. And research shows that varied learning approaches improve focus and retention compared to repetitive methods. When you switch it up and keep things fresh, you'll also prevent boredom and keep yourself mentally stimulated. A study by the University of Waterloo found that students who use multiple learning methods reported feeling more engaged and confident. And lastly, when you're presenting information to yourself in different ways, you're actually creating different memory pathways. Even switching between active and passive learning can reinforce your understanding. A study by the National Institutes of Health found that multimodal learning led to better recall and application of knowledge. Knowledge. And you can create a study routine that keeps all of this in mind. Going back to my schedule, again from about 5 to 7 in the morning, this was my personal study time. So this is when I was at home doing Anki in my basement, clicking the space bar, and that was that. And then in the midday from about 8 to 4, I would leave my basement and actually be on campus in class or in the hospital learning less from looking at a screen and more from actually engaging with classmates, professors, and even patients. And lastly, in the evening from about five to six, I would return home and prepare for the next day, either doing things like watching videos on a topic that I'll be learning the next day or doing practice questions to prepare for an upcoming exam. Switching the way that you're studying can be game changing and there are actually some incredible resources out there that provide multiple different ways for you to learn their material so that you can take full advantage of all of the things that we just talked about within a single resource. And this actually brings me to the fantastic sponsors of today's video, KinHub. I've said it multiple times on this channel, but KinHub is my favorite resource for learning anatomy. Watching the incredibly high yield videos that they have has always been one of my favorite ways to learn anatomy as a medical student. 
and now they have this incredible atlas of human anatomy which i absolutely love this new KinHub Atlas of Human Anatomy is a pocket-sized but still comprehensively detailed book of easily digestible tables and the highest quality images on the market. And what's even better is they have included greater diversity and inclusivity in their illustrations. If you're interested in getting your hands on this KinHub Atlas of Human Anatomy, check out the link in the description below. And I very highly recommend every pre-med, med student, nursing student, PT student, PA student, every student who wants to learn anatomy to check this thing out. You're definitely gonna love it. And thank you to KinHub for sponsoring this video. Now, the third strategy for successfully studying for prolonged periods of time without burning out is of course, prioritizing self-care. Taking care of yourself cannot be emphasized enough. A 2021 study in the Journal of Clinical Medicine found that self-care practices like mindfulness and exercise significantly reduced burnout and improved academic performance in medical students. I like to think about self-care into two general buckets, your body and your mind. We'll start with your body. Within your body, there are three more buckets, sleep, nutrition, and exercise. For sleep, studies have shown a clear link between quality of sleep and improved cognition, memory, and focus. Aim for seven to eight hours of high quality sleep or as much as your schedule allows because I know myself sometimes I miss the mark there. So just do your best. In terms of nutrition, your brain runs on fuel. So what you eat will contribute to your energy levels and your concentration. Think leafy greens, whole grains, and lean proteins, and avoid as much as you can of that processed stuff. And lastly, exercise. Getting moving will increase blood flow to the brain, improving your memory, and helping to reduce some of those stress hormones. Go for a run, join a gym class, or just dance in your room. Just do something to get your heart pumping. Now, in terms of wellness for your mind, meditation and mindfulness practices can be a game changer in keeping your mind present and still. Taking just 10 minutes a day to quiet your mind can significantly reduce stress and improve emotional emotional regulation. Apps like Headspace or Calm are amazing at getting you started. And don't forget the role of social connection on your mental well-being. Humans are social creatures. Spending time with loved ones, joining a club, or simply chatting with friends provides emotional support and reduces feelings of isolation. And lastly, don't underestimate the power of downtime. Whether it's reading, painting, playing an instrument, or simply taking a walk in nature, having hobbies helps you de-stress and recharge. Now the final and arguably highest yield strategy for studying upwards of 10 hours hours a day without burning out is the idea of gamifying your work. Gamification is just incorporating things that are in games like points, streaks, and challenges to make your work more engaging and motivating. One of my guilty pleasures is this phone game. It's called Clash Royale. It's like a spinoff on the historic Clash of Clans. But this game has had me hooked because there are daily tasks to complete, experience points to earn, and new characters to unlock, and even a leaderboard to track my progress. These things are intentionally designed to give us a sense of achievement and motivation that have made people like myself an addict. But there's no reason we can't design our own studies like this. A 2020 study in the Journal of Educational Psychology found that gamified learning led to improved academic performance and increased student engagement. And research by the University of California, Irvine, showed that gamification enhanced motivation and knowledge retention in medical students. Luckily, a lot of learning resources are already beginning to incorporate elements of gamification. Flashcard tools like Anki are my go-to, which turns memorization into a game, which improves your ability to recall information you're learning. I have a very detailed video on how I use Anki in medical school, which you can check out somewhere up there. But one of my favorite features about Anki is that it tracks your streaks, and so you can see how long you've done Anki every single day without stopping, and my streak was over 1100 days. And yes, you heard the word was. My Anki streak has been broken, but we will talk about this in a future video because I've already said too much. But there are tons of options out there and anything that has practice questions or practice exams is a form of gamification because they allow you to easily track your progress and they give you immediate feedback. You can gamify your work in whatever creative ways that you come up with whether that's breaking down tasks into smaller challenges or creating a system of achieving points for different things that you do. But those are the four strategies that you can add to your own toolbox to be able to study for 10 hours or however long you need to become the best student that you can become. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're wondering what being married in medical school is like, check out this video right here. But as always, keep evolving and I'll see you guys soon.